Hello and welcome to the five firefighter fundamentals, bridging the gap between our mission and the fire ground. Allow me to make a quick introduction. My name is Christopher Houston. I'm a training officer at Bertrand Township Fire, a firefighter at Clay Fire Territory, and I own and operate the website enginecompany22.net. We are taking on more and more and doing it with less. This includes less time to train on our basic mission. We are running fewer fires as they become increasingly more dynamic and hostile. Customer service is our priority, but we cannot allow this increasing call variety to hinder our basic mission of fire protection. This presentation will hopefully give you, the student, information to ensure we serve our customers in whatever way we can. Us versus them. What separates us from the public? We have training, equipment, knowledge, and the fundamentals. Hours of training and education, coupled with the proper tools, equipment, and personal protection, allow us to do what we do. Modern society does not understand fire. A switch or button makes it and controls it. If that fire becomes unrestrained, the typical citizen reacts, usually in a manner that intensifies the problem or puts themselves in harm's way. We have to consider that we do not live with fire the way that man did even just a hundred years ago. This does not even take in consideration the volatile modern combustibles. 
People nowadays do not deal with the fire that we did in the past. So when we don't deal with the situation, we don't fully understand it. The fundamentals bridge the fire service mission of life safety, incident stabilization, property conservation, and the recovery process to the basic firefighter handbook. We must always keep the mission as a priority by meeting the fundamentals using the basics. All members of the fire service should understand these five fundamentals to make sure our objective is met. Our mission is life safety, instant stabilization, property conservation, and to start a recovery process. Your department's mission may expound upon that, where your crew is above that, and so on. Our history, our present, and our future must be known and understood by all members. We, whether by formal oath or not, and by taking the title of firefighter, swore an oath to protect those of the community in which we serve. Part of this duty means their needs may come before our own, whether it's 3 a.m. and we have to babysit a down line, or we're rushing out to save Mrs. Smith and her baby from a burning building, our duty is to do what is within our power to solve the problem. To accomplish this, we must always be preparing for the request of the community. Some simply ask to be there when they call. Others ask us to be more involved. This does not matter if you do it for compensation or no compensation, or have a fully staffed and funded full service department. We have taken this oath to serve. Let's talk fire service history. Most history comes from tragedy, great loss, or even great triumph. Our fire service history is a mixture of anything and everything in between. The bucket brigades of old to our most recent line of duty death, everyone in the fire service should have a personal connection to it, and it starts from the moment they walk into our doors. Department history, creating this personal connection is even more important. Some of us have family in the fire service and already have that connection. What about those who are the first generation or know nothing about the fire department? A sense of pride and ownership is much more reasonable to create when a connection is made to the fire department. When a new member feels this connection, they take more pride in they, their work. It's not just about them. It's about place, a place they can belong. Finally, to really understand how they will connect to the fire service, ask them their history. Knowing where they come from and why they are here opens up a dialogue and gets them feeling wanted. Who wants to work hard for someone or some place where they feel as though they don't belong? When talking with new members, try to give them some history of the fire service as a whole. Discuss some of the early colonial fire protection that we had. Discuss how a lot of fire departments actually created out of the insurance industry and how we evolved from carrying around buckets to the bunkers we wear today. Once they understand the basics of the fire service history, discuss when your department was established. Talk about key events and successes. Discuss your proud traditions and ceremonies. Get them feeling connected to your fire department. Ask them about their history. Learn where they came from and how they came to enter the fire service and why. This knowledge is instrumental in taking them to the next level. When you know your people and know what they can do, you can get the best out of them. And this starts the moment they enter our fire department doors. We understand that firefighters operate in some pretty difficult places. They do the same things over again. Uh, there's, there's a lot of different pieces and parts in an EMS call or, or in a, an intensive connection with a customer that we have to be on guard about. And I think that we have looked at customer service sort of in two ways. One is the core service that we deliver that basically we do a great job on. We get very, very few complaints or even negative observations on us doing the skills part of delivering service. The second part of that, though, is the added value part of it. Now, words, it's a little extra that, that we add to those calls. It's the way that we conduct ourselves. It's the very personal, interpersonal message that we send those customers that simply we care about them and that we focus on them and what's going on in their lives at that moment when they're kind of having a bad day, and that's the reason that we connect to them. Now, what happens to us is the, custom, the, the core service, as far as that customer process is concerned, is what gets us in the door. 
their kitchen's on fire, they're having a medical emergency, they had an automobile accident, and they call us to deliver a definitive service to them. No one would take anything away from how critical it is that we deliver first-class service from a technical, tactical point of view. The part, though, that we get, a, we get feedback on and that really makes what we call five-star service, exceptional service, is the added value part of it. In other words, and we continue to hear the people, pets, pictures, and pills part of that event where people will notice the difference that we made in the way that we treated them, the way we were patient with them, the way we customized that service to meet what their needs were. Fundamental number two, roles and responsibilities. Each member of the fire service must comprehend their role, responsibilities, and rank within the department structure, but not only their role, but the role of those around them. Expectations are huge. Lay them out and reinforce. You cannot punish someone for not following your expectations if you did not present them along with clear directives on how to meet them. When new people enter the fire service, they're not only learning what is expected of them, but they should know what's expected of others around them so they can see how they fit into the puzzle. Remember that textbooks only explain so much. All members need to understand their roles and ranks within the department. With more and more individual activities in schools and as people are growing up, not everyone is getting that player, team, coach, rank and file mentality. Even seasoned members may forget and misunderstand roles and responsibilities within the structure. As new members are coming in, especially our younger generations, a lot of them don't necessarily play team sports in high school. They may still be involved with activities, but there's single player events out there now. Do they understand rank and file and that they have to report to someone above them and that they're part of a team? Do they understand how a team works? We must remember these personal qualities that are very important to a fire service member. Leadership comes in many forms. Most times when we discuss leaders, positions of power or office are brought up. In recent years, the fire service has talked more and more about leaders, being a leader and informal leader. Formal leaders don't always exhibit good leadership skills, just as informal leaders with strong leadership skill may not exhibit good formal office or position skills. I was once taught about utilizing the barn boss to get the expectations of the formal leaders performed by the frontline firefighters. The barn boss is a very good example of an informal leader. Fundamental number three, training and education. We must recognize that training is a never-ending process, and it is essential to maintain our skills and improve our level of service. I'm going to discuss briefly the difference between vertical and horizontal growth. Vertical growth is a full understanding of the subject. Take ventilation. Sure, you can cut a hole in the roof, but do you understand the science behind fire building ventilation? because ventilation is so much more than an act of just cutting a hole. Vertical growth is getting that knowledge, and the skills, and the abilities. Think of a tree. You want a tree to go big and tall. Horizontal is just kind of excessive fat. It's there, but it doesn't do a whole lot for you. If a tree was to grow wide, it would never grow tall, and it would never be able to reach towards the sun. Other things would grow, grow up around it. It's growing big, just not big and tall. We want to have a good understanding. Avoid the low-lying fruit. Don't just go after the easy subjects. Challenge yourself. Go out and, and really dig in. Lastly, let's discuss performance. I believe performance equals training plus experience plus desire. To be able to perform better, your training has to be there and it has to improve. You have to gain experience, whether it's through practice or actual performance on the fire ground, and you have to desire to improve. Desire is key. If you don't want to improve, you're going to go for that low-lying fruit, and you're going to have that horizontal growth only. You may or may not be familiar with my passion for self-improvement. The belief that all parts of an organization sustain knowledge and skills, learns from its own experience, seeks continuous improvement while evaluating their own performance. Firefighters must desire to always outperform yesterday while learning for tomorrow. We must develop a culture of self-improvement. The fire service already has it. We just need to improve upon it every day. 
How do we define a culture of self-improvement? Each one of us, no matter what rank, must have a desire to improve our knowledge, attitude, and skill set. Although there may be various degrees of improvement of multiple skills, they all have to be measurable. To establish your own improvement process, a list of standards, goals, and expectations must be set. The organization should have a dynamic living excellence plan. The plan should be developed and compiled by members of all levels. As improvements occur, the plan is reevaluated to ensure an enhancement upon the current progress is made. From time to time, a deficit may be identified and actions should be taken to correct these behaviors and abilities. All members seek and embrace changes designed to improve organizational objectives. On the management side, this should already be established. Policy and procedures include expectations and the means to meet them. Where the typical plan fails is at the street level. Management must be open to feedback from those who make the SOPs or SOGs live and breathe on the fire ground and the firehouse. Most gaps in excellence are identified within this spectrum. What works on paper may not work on the street. From my personal point of view, this is the responsibility of the company officer and the training division to fill the gap. The officers should report issues that are found between the written documents and the actions they have taken on scenes. Having a plan to evaluate procedures and actual actions may show problems with the rules, the interpretation of those rules, or an issue with training. As the old saying goes, failure to plan is a plan for failure. Do you already have a culture of self-improvement? Can you see elements within yourself or your crew? A few significant indicators are members' desire to attend training and seek out additional training, staying current on trends and evaluating your own practices to see if your organization could have the same gap, maintain a low threshold on error problem identification. When issues arise on the fire ground, you take proactive steps to correct them before they escalate. This relates to safety and tactics. What about company level training? Does your company work on self-identified gaps in excellence? Most of our fire ground issues relate directly to our own actions. Our effectiveness on the fire ground has a direct correlation to our willingness to improve. During my career, I have worked with very few people, if any, that did not want to do a good job. However, there are many who feel they know an adequate amount and how they perform is acceptable. Personally, I have a very difficult time with that mindset. Fire service professionals should have a strong desire to continuously raise the bar and con consistently improve. This posture includes skills, knowledge, health, fitness, and performance. Desire, a key element of overall performance, is a personal belief and feeling. Yet those around you can stroke the fire of desire. The FDIC attendee knows this feeling. Take the lead to create a culture of self-improvement if you are the one that inspires to prove. Culture seems to be a hot topic or even a buzzword these days. Regardless of what side of the fence you sit on, culture is an important aspect of the fire service. A culture of self-improvement is a culture change we can all agree on. Traditionally, we have a culture of self-improvement. Look at all the tool inventions that have been created by firefighters to improve the job that we do. Although desire cannot be taught, it can be influenced. Having a positive attitude is contagious. Do you feel empowered to succeed by your fire department? Do you acknowledge your own failures? And how do you overcome them? You must identify those gaps to be able to improve. If you just say, good is good enough, you will never see true success. Let's discuss a few key points about training and education. We want to outline how important training is to our trade. Learning is a never-ending process and it must be set as a priority. Tell your people that we can do the work and then we can have fun because a lot of times the fun is in the work itself. We want to try to avoid the clicks and as leaders, company officers, get in there and try to break those clicks up. You know the group of two or three that really want to train and be there and then the group of the distractors that don't want to be there, they want to just have fun and get out of there. Try to mix those up so everyone gets their fair amount of training. You may even change some attitudes with that. We must remind everyone that training is for both our own benefit and the customers. When we perform better, we can serve our customers better. What should we be training on? 
75% of the time, it should be the basics, the core functions of our job. 25% can be the advanced skills. All training must be used to improve performance of all members. Each member must get something out of it. When training is designed, this must be included. Simply meeting standards is not enough. Some departments or members may have difficulty meeting standards. This must be at a pace that allows for quality service and safety. All training must be re relevant to today's trends. This is the hardest part because everything changes so fast. If the basics are met, being able to adapt is easier to do. The old saying, train like you fight and fight like you train, is 100% accurate. Train to real conditions as much as you possibly can. The training division concept, because we must remember all personnel have a stake in training. The training officer doesn't, nor should, know it all. So what we do is we bring in subject matter experts from within your department. Volunteer departments, what if you have a guy that's a contractor during the day? Allow him to teach the building construction class. Or maybe a truck driver. He could be going over apparatus driving. Use people within your own department, because not only will they feel comfortable with people that they work within the department, but it's not just a single person getting up and leading training at all times. This way you empower your people to feel that they have a stake in training and that they can add and contribute to it. For departments that have limited time to train, use combination training to meet various standards in a realistic manner. This not only combines several standards that you need to meet and train on, but you actually get more realistic training. You can combine bloodborne pathogen training with extrication and first aid. For example, use fake blood on a patient. And when the student gets exposed, then they have to go through your bloodborne pathogen policy. This could be during an extrication training. They could also perform first aid after they've extricated the patient. Training teaches us our playbook, plus gives us the ability to call the audible. But the audible must come from our playbook. Fundamental number four, tools and equipment. New tools evolve from a need to make our job quicker, safer, and easier for us. How many fire service tools were invented by firefighters? The same way mechanics build tools to fit their needs, the fire service is quick to create a tool for our own convenience. It is your personal responsibility to be competent with your personal equipment. You will be in a hazardous and uncomfortable situations where you may want to shed your PPE. However, when you train and are comfortable while wearing and engaged in fire ground activities, you will be better protected and more effective. Not everyone in the department is familiar with everything in the firehouse. You must review certain station equipment with all members. Not everyone gets the same exposure to different equipment as others. These items include fill stations, different hand tools, maintenance equipment, phones, faxes, computers, and different appliances. We all have different life experiences, and we must be able to adapt and teach members that don't understand some of this equipment. This seems like a very obvious slide. However, coming from the recruit class to the assigned station or rig, tools, their names, and local variations are like reading Chinese to the new firefighter. The same can be said for the seasoned firefighter. New tools for old uses or old tools with new uses and techniques should always be reviewed. Pike poles, for instance, have been around a long time, but they are not the most effective tool in modern construction. Tools and equipment are used to department SOPs and SOGs. All members should understand how to operate equipment to the standards that work for your department. Do you have local standards? What about considerations to local staffing, resources, and dispatch methods. Local needs should dictate how and what type of equipment your responders should know how to operate and maintain. A fire service tool is different than an ordinary tool. My saw, when I'm on the truck and that's the chainsaw that I made operate, that's my saw for the day and I want to make sure that it operates. You got to remember too, this is not the tool that's in the, your tool shed. This is on the engine or the truck. It's a life-saving tool. It should be regarded as such. Fundamental number five, fire prevention. All members of the fire service promote and advance public education. 
Our priority is the continuous reduction and prevention of fire emergencies. This is our most aggressive fire tactic, is fire prevention. All units responding, station 414, working fire, 151 Johnson Avenue. 500, 110 units, Abington 591, heavy smoke show on second floor. Pipeline 400, Medic 108, rescue 300. The holiday season can be a fun and festive time for everyone. Here's a few safety tips to ensure the holiday memories are good ones. Use caution with candles. Keep them away from objects such as curtains or decorations. Always blow them out when you leave the room for an extended period of time. Also, with the extra lighters and matches that may be involved, make sure to keep those out of the hands of children. Carefully decorating Christmas trees can help make your holidays safer. When decorating your tree, always use lights listed by a testing laboratory. Some lights are designed only for indoor or outdoor use, but not both. Larger tree lights should also have some type of reflector rather than a bare bulb. Never use lit candles to decorate a tree, and make sure any lit candle in a room is placed well away from the tree branches. Try to keep live trees as moist as possible by giving them plenty of water daily. Do not purchase a tree that is dry or dropping needles. Check for fresh, green needles. And place your tree in a sturdy tree stand designed not to tip over. If you purchase an artificial tree, be sure it is labeled as fire retardant. Fixed wiring, switches, receptacles, and outlets account for the largest share of fires among major types of electrical distribution equipment and account for the largest share of civilian fire death and injury. Always avoid overloading outlets. Avoid running extension cords across doorways or under carpets. Follow the manufacturer's instructions for plugging an appliance. Just as there are holiday lights for indoor and outdoor use, there's also extension cords for indoor or outdoor use. Always inspect your extension cords before use. Be sure to replace cords that are frayed or have exposed wire. When possible, make sure the cords are grounded. Never cut off the grounding prong. Use power strips with caution. Only plug in one power strip per outlet. A little fire safety can go a long way this holiday season. From all of us at EngineCompany22.net, have a safe and happy holiday. Our most aggressive tactic, fire prevention. It comes in various shapes and methods and types. Whether it's going out and dressing up as Smokey the Detector, getting in the classrooms teaching stop, drop, and roll, visiting a senior center, having a fire department open house, or just spreading leaflets, we must be out preventing emergencies. This comes through public education. The public nowadays can press a button and fire starts for them. They don't fully understand the, the dangers that it can possibly hold if they misoperate equipment. What about code enforcement? We, we must have some type of code enforcement within our department. We have another side to fire prevention, and that's educating the public about the fire service. Teach people about what we do and why we do it. Sort of a help us help you mentality. I read an article a few years ago where a woman lost her life in a structure fire. Family, friends, neighbors questioned why this happened. The fire department was able to step up and say, we performed certain tactics based on these conditions. It was unfortunate of the outcome, but this is what we're trained to do with these conditions. When the public understands what we do and why we do, they can better understand how to prevent emergencies, and it may help in other aspects of our relationship with the public. To recap, the five fundamentals are the foundation to stay the course to meet our mission. They bridge the gap between our mission of life safety, incident stabilization, and property conservation, and the actual tactics and tasks we perform on the fire ground. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you found value in this presentation. And if you did, please feel free to share it with other firefighters that may also enjoy it. As always, we'll see you on the training ground. We'll see you on the fire ground. Stay safe.